But today I feel the Lord wants to commission and, and set out some people for some great things that must happen in the nation. So I might not touch too much about culture, but I feel when I minister, there are some people that will, will receive a commissioning today. There are some things that the nation has to receive from the church. And there are people here who are sitting here whom God wants to use. God has no superstars. He has no celebrities. He has no one-man show. God is into the priesthood of all believers. So I'm not the only one who's called and anointed by God for great stuff. Everybody is. It's just a matter of are you hearing the voice of God. Some of your calling may be brought out of your pain and the things you experience. So the place of brokenness sometimes can be a place where the anointing is released. Because when grapes, when the anointing was produced, there was a crushing. So your crushing may be the place where your gift and anointings are being released. So sometimes do not run away from crushing. So crushing may be necessary. So I believe God has come people here that he wants to release for some things, but maybe they don't think like that concerning who they are. So I want to uh, learn this and perhaps use Jeremiah 1, um, verse 5 to verse 10, a very well-known portion of Scripture from verse 4. The word of the Lord came to me saying, so before I continue, and I like this the way it starts, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, you, you always need the word of the Lord coming to you. Because sometimes the words of man keep coming to you and keep defining who you are. There's only one word that changes life, the word of God. So one word from God can change your life. Often one word from God is better than a thousand words from men. That's why the Bible says, better is one day in the courts of the Lord than a thousand elsewhere. So Jeremiah says, well, the Lord came unto me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were, before I, I, I knew you, before you were born, I sanctified you when I set you apart. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Lo, God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am youth, for you shall go to whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I'm, I will be, I'll, I'll be able to deliver you, said the Lord. Then the Lord put his hand and touch my mouth. And the Lord said, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have set before you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. And so this young man, um, like many of us sitting here, and we don't expect that God in heaven perhaps could speak to us. Like Samuel, the Lord spoke to him, and he was in the temple and the Lord spoke to him. He kept responding to Eli, did you call me? And three times, and the Lord said to him, and he spoke, Lord, speak for your servant is listening. And the Lord spoke to him finally. For some of us, are not expecting God's voice. We don't expect such an awesome, sovereign God to be busy and concerned about a normal, ordinary person like you. Yet God uses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. He comes in where we don't expect. He comes to a young girl who is betrothed to be married to Joseph. She's young, and the angel comes. And it's not any angel. It's the archangel. It's a senior angel. He brings in a senior angel, a messenger angel. There are three uh, important um, Ws in heaven. It's the word, which is Gabriel. It's warfare, which is Michael. And it was worship, which was Lucifer, which we have replaced because he's fallen. And so these are, these are three giants of angels. So God sends, whenever God releases something great in the earth, he will send a, this archangel to release this word. So he comes to this lady and tells her, Hail Mary, you are highly favored of God. For you found favor. Because she says, I, what, I don't expect this kind of greeting. And, and the Lord speaks to her. And the Lord said to her, and she says, I don't know a man. So she responds like Jeremiah. Jeremiah says, but I'm young. So like people respond to God by reminding God of their situation and circumstances as if like he doesn't know, as if like he's blind. So there's this tendency of telling God, like Moses told God, but I'm a stammerer, I don't speak. And then God says, who made the mouth? And so you don't want to engage, you don't argue with God. Like Job asked God, Job started arguing with God, but why are these things happening to me? It's unfair. And God says, okay, let's have a meeting, Job. Were you there when I stretched out the heavens? Were you there when I told the seas where to end? And Job realized, it doesn't, doesn't help to argue with God. Just, just know that God is right and I'm wrong. Let me just accept that. So, so Jeremiah did the same thing. I, I am young. There's no age in the gospel. There's, there's, no, there's no maturity. There's no age. God will use you if you're available to God. God doesn't look for your ability. He looks for your availability. 
When you become available to God, there's nothing that is difficult with God. So the Spirit of the Lord, um, Gabriel says, the Spirit of the Lord, says to this woman, the Spirit of the Lord shall overshadow you. The, the, the power of the Almighty shall overshadow and you shall conceive. So there's a place in God where you're overshadowed by the Holy Spirit. And in that place of intimacy with the Holy Spirit, there's a, that's a place of conception. You see, when a place of familiarity, the public place, maybe in the house or in the lounge where everybody walks in, that's a place where it's public. But then the bedroom is a place for the couple. And that's only in the bedroom that there's intimacy and there's conception. So there's a place in God where you must move out of the public into the private space where it's you and God. Only in that secret place where conception takes place. You have to therefore move away from just corporate worship and to enter into a private place called private worship. You can understand how to, to intimately engage the Father so that he conceives in you a dream that is so big, so massive, so amazing that you just don't know, you feel you're pregnant with something so big. You don't even know how to walk because of the pregnant thing that you carry. You don't even know what to do. You don't even know what to do because such greatness. When I discovered the issue of greatness over my life, it literally shocked me. It shocked me that not only that I'm called, it shocked me that he has called me to this level. That I'm, I'm, I was, I was thought, why, why? And I keep asking, like, I'm like, why? Why? Why me? Why this? Why that? Why this? Like, 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 the, like the, the whens and the why. Don't, like, don't ask about the whens and the why. Just receive it. Okay, so your culture is not going to help you to understand heaven's program for your life. I just want to read a few things here in, in, in my book concerning the difference between understanding yourself based on culture and understanding yourself based on God's purpose. And what we talk about epistemology, epistemology is a word that refers to your background, your knowledge of where you come from. And so some of us, I hear this a lot, it's time for Africans to go back to where they come from. And I ask, how far back do we go? I don't mind going back, but find out how far back to go. Don't, don't go back 600 years ago or 700 years ago. Let's go back all the way back to Adam and Eve because whatever ancestor you count yourself from, where does he come from? So I don't mind going back, but I want to go back all the way back to where everything originates from, from the source, the father, the, where everything. So I want to go back to Adam and discover why was Adam placed in the garden? Why did God decide in eternity past, in dateless past, like he decided in his mind, in his vast, infinite mind, to make man in his image and likeness and place him in the garden to rule over the hydrosphere, the biosphere, and the atmosphere and place him here? To, why did God decide to do this? Why? And if he decided to do that, he has, not, he has not changed his mind, therefore. He's still intentional about the fact that man is supposed to rule the earth on God's behalf. So God has not changed. We might have changed. He has not changed. So there's two, king, there's two views here. There's two kingdoms. There's two ways of looking at it. There's two cultural value systems. There's two worldviews conflicting. There's a worldly system where in the world you are, you are pursuing, or in the world the focus is on a career, and in the kingdom the focus is on a calling. So in the world you talk career. In the kingdom you talk calling. In the world, you talk skill. In the kingdom, you talk gift. In the world, you talk employment. In the kingdom, you talk deployment. In the world, you talk income. In the kingdom, you talk impact. These are not the same concepts. These are not the same concepts. So here, we judge you based on material objects. And the impact you make for God, not, it's so important because it, it, it's not, you don't, I tell guys in my church, they come to Cape Town, they come to Jonas Bay, they're looking for a job. I tell people, don't, don't you don't just go looking for a job, for goodness sake. You don't just travel the whole country as a vagabond from place to place looking for a job. God will have to direct, the steps of a righteous person are ordered by God. This thing of just applying, you can't send CVs everywhere if God is speaking to you. Surely if you send CVs everywhere, God is not speaking to you. You're taking chances. 
If God is speaking to you, you're listening to God's voice. You want him to know you don't take a job for how much it pays you. You take a job for much, how much impact you make. So you're looking for how much impact, not how much payment I'm being received. How much impact? How much can I impact this? So we go there as vessels planted by God. So we don't become slaves, modern day slaves. Well, now your price is determined, it's in your forehead, so you have determined, your, so you are still a slave, but a different one. You are for sale. Your eight hours are measured by somebody else. You are worth 20 rand an hour, whatever the case may be, you are for sale. The time on earth is not to be wasted. The Bible said, redeem the times, for the days are evil. Time is key to purpose. That's why in African religion, there's no belief in destiny. And destiny is important. In African religion, they don't believe destiny. They believe each individual is an extension of his ancestral hierarchy. So you don't matter as an individual. When I meet you, I ask you for your clan name. I don't ask you for your name because the individual doesn't matter. What matters is the corporate body or the collective it comes from. That's African religion. But in God's kingdom, individuals matter. And there's a teaching of individual accountability that you will stand by, for God, before God on your own and account, not a tribe, but you will stand and account for your own actions. It's different. And therefore, God speaks to Jeremiah as an individual, not just his family. He speaks to Gideon as an individual, even though Gideon reminds God again that we are the smallest of all tribes. We are the nobodies who are known as the nobodies. With the smallest of the old tribe, but God says, you mighty men of valor, go in your strength. So God knows individuals. He knows our names. He knows who we are. He knows where we are planted. So, I mean, I get people who travel to Johannesburg. They think, yeah, yeah, we're going to be paid lots of money in Johannesburg. But you're not going to make impact. You're not going to make impact. In this earth, you'll be judged by impact, not by income. When it's all and said and done, when, we, when this whole thing is, when the curtain comes down and the whole thing closes, you'll be judged by the impact you make, not by the income you end. Oh, in the beginning, in the beginning it's the income. In the beginning it's the income. It's a nice car. It's a nice cell phone. It's a ni- in the beginning, you drive around. In the, it's, it's just, but when the whole thing comes, when the whole thing comes to an end, only thing you'll be measured by is the impact you made. Not how much money you earned. Because the money will mean nothing. Gone, buried, you came here, and all you did was just consume. You're just a consumer. You just filled up space. You breath, you're just breathing air. You're just a statistic. You just, you just wasted God's time. You had the whole Holy Spirit upon you. The whole of heaven inside of you. And all you do, you get a job. (laughs) All you do, just wake up every morning, get a salary. With the whole Holy Spirit on you. No creative mind, no solutions, no touching anybody's life, no helping anybody. All you do, eight in the morning, five in the afternoon, all you do, and now you come and eat, you sleep, you wake up, the same thing, routine, monotony. No impact, no change. Nothing, no legacy, no posterity, nothing behind you living. Just to consume. Anything, if I get, get this kind of gin and get this diesel or, or petrol or paraffin, I don't know how these, these things are. <laughs> and you enter these labels, you change the labels, you go to the next label, you're obsessed with these things. Your time is going. By the time you're where you're old now, you can't, the strength of a youth is gone. You can't use your strength. The world has sucked you into its system. You become a consumer. You know, you wake up, you've wasted your time. Yes, you look around a big house and, ah, oh, it's a big house, it's just a shell, it's brick and mortar. Not nothing you've achieved. You look at your cars, it's just, all of these things are the same. Go, I don't care if yours is key, let's start. Mine has a key, they all start. I had a killer start, so what? I want to look at me, I want to, it's when I start. And then day, I'm going to go, I want to move. So why should I be worried about this killer start? I mean, mine also starts. So you go around and obsessing over material objects. 
some metal that somebody put together and took some cow skin and put it there and we call it leather seats and, and all of that and we think we have arrived. Arrived where? <laughs> arrived where? I don't have a degree. You must understand that I, I, I envy you. I don't have a degree. I'm a dropout. I'm a dropout. I'm a dropout. But I ask you, why are you studying? You have a degree. You are the clever ones. You are the clever ones. You are the ones doing masters and PhD. You are the clever ones. I'm a dropout. I did one year of tertiary. I am an actual dropout. You are the clever ones. And then I ask people, I go to university, where are you studying? You get a job. I'm like, yes, get a job. I mean, you come here, you spend 12 years in school, four more years at tertiary, maybe six or seven, just to get a job. For goodness sake, all, you, you have all this mind stretched, all these concepts, all this knowledge put inside of you just to go and just get a job. What a waste of effort. I mean, you just spend all the time doing that. I didn't go and get a I didn't go and get a degree, master, but I've got money also. So what's your problem? I also have money. So I don't understand why you must spend 20 years looking for money. I have money now. I didn't do the effort you made. Which tells us that God is a provider, not any other companies. So we need to change the structure of the church. The church doesn't exist for your comfort. No, we're not here, we're not here to make sure that the aircon is fine for you. We're not here for you. The church is the only organization that exists for those who are not yet its members. The church exists for those who are not yet its members. It doesn't exist for its members. So if you hear and you say so you know, the ambience or, or the environment did not fit you, I don't like the ambience. Go away. We're not here for you. We're not here for your ambience. We're here to win souls and get people discipled to go to heaven. We are here to empty hell and populate heaven. We're not here for your comfort. They didn't sing my favorite song. Who told you must sing your favorite song? <laughs> I mean, we're not here to worship you. So the service is not nice because you felt good. We're not here for you. If God feels good, the service is good because we are here for God. We're not here to worship you. You don't have to feel good for the service to feel good. The owner of the service must feel good, not you. You're not the center of the service. So why must you design a service around you? We have come to worship you. You must just understand you are here to submit to God's system. That's all it's about. It's about submitting to God's system. God is not asking you to come and join and just journey with him forever and just do your own thing. Now I accept Jesus, but I live my own life. What life are you talking about? You have no life of your own. You remember you gave your life away. Don't you remember the day I gave my... You forgot now. You gave your life. You were standing here giving your life away. What do you think you were doing? You can't give something and take it back. Why you take it back? You gave your life away. It doesn't belong to you. Paul says it. Our bodies belong to Christ. We gave him. So he owns us. God owns 100% of you. You have no ownership of yourself. The only thing you should be asking is the master, what, where, how, where should I go? He owns you. You wake up and you make your own choice. Google things. <laughs> you Google anything, you're clever, you Google. You think you're clever than God, you're busy Googling. <laughs> and then you think you're clever. You're not clever. You're not clever at all. You read the Bible, you understand God's purpose, and you submit to God's purpose. Then you're wise. For the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Not Googling. If you fear God, you're wise. So you get wisdom. God, see, God is looking for vessels. See, God is desperate. Let me tell you something. Heaven is desperate. Heaven is desperate. Looking for vessels. The eyes of God are, told, are going to and fro. Looking for whom, whose hearts are yearning towards him. God is looking for the next bengu, the next so-and-so. He's looking, he's looking. God is watching, he's looking. There's too many people who, don't, who are not useful to God. See, there's churches that are full. God is just like, yeah, I don't need these ones. Just, just sing along people. It's just choirs. It's just, they come to they do sing alongs. I don't need these people. I need, I need those who are yearning towards me. So God is desperate. 
Everybody's just singing their hymns and doing their stuff. So there's too many people who are clouding God, who are just, who are just, who are just clouding God. They're just making, they're just, they're just, they're, they're just a crowd. A crowd in God's presence. Always crying with their needs. Oh, bless me. Oh, bless me. It's me again, Lord. It's me again. <laughs> it's me again. It was yesterday. It's again. It's me again. Like God says, is it you again? I, I mean, come on. Look at the story of Anna. Look at the story of Anna. Anna was praying all the time in the temple, all the time praying for the sun. She was praying. They even thought she was drunk. She prayed all the time. There was no sun. There was no sun. Until her prayer changed. There was no sun. Until her prayer changed. She decided. She learned something. Oh, oh, God has a need. Has a need. He needs a prophet. So let's do an exchange with God. I've been all the time focusing on my needs. I forgot God also has needs. So I changed now my prayer to be God's needs first. So she said to God, if you give me this son, I'll give him to you as a prophet. Now God says, now let's make a deal. Now you're talking. Now you are talking. If I give my give son, I'll, I'll give him to you as a prophet. God now answer the prayer. See, God has his own needs. It's not about you. I mean, you already, you can already have stuff, but you want stuff atop, on top of stuff. You, you already have stuff. You, like, like Oprah one says, this guy's Oprah one says, I've got things. She was just amazed at herself. She said, I've got things. I, I even have got things to put things on. I've got things. <laughs> I think some of us just want things to put things on. You know? And so, we have to understand, therefore, the value of being set apart by God. So, I want to read a few things for you um, here regarding the difference between culture and purpose. Purpose is what you're born for, but culture is what you're born into. Purpose has to do with the reasons for your birth, while culture has to do with the circumstances around your birth. Purpose caused your birth, while culture is incidental to your birth. Purpose does not change, but culture does. Purpose is God's gift to you, but culture is man's gift. Purpose is heavenly, but culture is earthly. Purpose is worth dying for, but culture is not. The, the impact of a life lived under purpose lasts forever, but the impact of a life lived under culture is momentary. If you knew everything about your culture, but knew nothing about your purpose, then you have lived a wasted life. So you need to understand something. Before they formed your culture, God formed you in his mind. So those who did not form you have no right to define what God has formed. You were formed in God's mind. You were an idea in God's mind. You were the word. You were an idea that God has produced into the earth to be a gift to the earth. Now you're defined by people who did not follow their own purpose. So they're trying to leave their own purpose through you. They are lost. They're trying to make you be lost like them. So don't think, I don't, I don't want to be lost alone. Join me in being lost. No, I'm not joining you. I don't, I don't mind. I, don't want, I want to join. I want to follow God. And so God wants to set people apart this, this evening for his purpose and plans. Oh, God. God, God is a God of greatness. Oh, no, God. God wants, God wants, to, God wants some donkeys to ride on. God, God, God wants to move into a city. But God, needs, God doesn't walk the earth. He walks through people. God sits in his heaven. He rested. But he moves through human vessels. He needs a yes. God doesn't want a maybe now. He wants a yes. Yes, yes. Whatever your will is, yes to it. Whatever you say, master, be unto me as according to your word. Like Peter. If you say I must throw the net, I will throw the net. According to your word. If you say, master, I shall do it. We should be so obsessed with Jesus. If he speaks, you obey now. He says, jump, say how high. He's Lord, isn't it? He's Lord. He's Adonai. He's master. That's what the Lord means. Lord, ruler. You don't argue with the ruler. You obey a ruler. He speaks, you obey. Because your life depends on obedience. He knows what's best for you. Therefore, if you speak something, just say yes to him. He knows what's best for you. If you don't obey him, you'll be stuck in your own ways. There's no poverty for those who obey God. Let me tell you this. Very clear. There's no poverty. You don't get poor. He provides. He takes care. I told, I told other guys, I, you, can, you can match all you want, lift up your knees all you want with all the political parties and look for provision. Or you can keep your knees on down before God. You will be successful. It's up to you. 
Which model do you take? Do you want to keep your knees up or do you want to keep, when you keep your knees down, your success is guaranteed. We don't have guarantees for this matching business. You know, so they might ignore you. You may match the whole day. They might not even pay attention. They might not receive your, your manifesto. They will just say, no, we're closed now. <laughs> but God always receives your manifesto. Because always his ear is always open. His ear is not deaf to hear. His arm is not short to save. But what he needs is an exchange. A divine exchange. Paul wants, God wants his Paul, his soul to become Paul. He's looking. He's looking to Saul. He's, and he knows that I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. He's busy. He's seething with anger against my church. God knows. One day. And Saul is going to Damascus. Riding on the tongue. God knows. Huh? It's your day today. <laughs> Some of you are riding to Johannesburg or to Cape Town for a job. You're going. And God, I, I'm going to get you. I want to get you. I know for a fact. I know in my life. Circumstances worked out differently. I was here. To start the IT, to be a programmer, to earn money. I was on my donkey, ready to conquer the world. <laughs> ready to conquer the world. But the Lord, lightning struck from heaven. <laughs> and the Lord spoke. I, 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 no, I, that's not, I didn't call you for that. I know nothing about computers. I'm just looking at the salary. I don't love computers. I have no love. I'm just, a salary means something. I just saw the salary of programmers. I'm like, I want that money. <laughs> so money was my motivation. I lived for money. Live for money. What a, what a wasted life to live for money. I mean, if they give you the whole money in the world, what's the point? Wasted. You have all this money. But you, don't, you lack substantial matters. Deep stuff. You're fleeting. Your life is just eating in restaurants and wearing nice clothes, but nothing else. You just go around and just eat sushi here and from here. And <laughs> <laughs> you know, they don't know. They don't, they don't, I don't know what they do now. They don't know. The, the guys don't know. They eat out, out of naked women sushi. They, they're just stuck with money. They don't know what to do. They don't know what to do with it. They're lost with money. You can be lost with money. Be with money and lost with money and go to hell with money. How do you think these musicians in America keep dying of drug overdose? With all the money, the Whitney Houston's and, uh, and all. They die with a lot of money. Hey, go to hell. Rich. Rich in hell. <laughs> the rich people do go to hell. It's not, yeah, go. It happens. You, you go there and the fire is, the fire there is not like your warm, fire at home where you warm yourself. It's, it's, it's hot. So, and there's no aircon there. You can't ask them to switch on your aircon. <laughs> so you are used to your servants. Switch the aircon on, put it at 18. Now there's no aircon there. <laughs> there's no aircon. It's permanently hot. The fire doesn't go down. The temperature is always hot. There's no aircon. There's no servants to, to, to do the fan over you to flip. No, you just, you're burning. And the worm dieth not. So you're burning. But as I close, I, I need to do... I need us to get this because this is a prayer we're going to make today. The nation is hungry right now. Uh, look, let me tell you, let me tell you this very straightforward. I have, I have lost, I've long lost my, my hope, my faith in these people because of politicians. Not like now, now over the week. No, no, long time ago. I've long believed that these ones are messing our lives up. These 400 people here in your parliament. Oh, those people. Those people. They are dangerous. <laughs> oh, well, these people, if we follow them, we're going nowhere. All of them. I mean all of them. I think that's nowhere. 400 people governing 44 million people. Our lives depend on 400 people who are messed up. Messed up 400 people are messing all of us up. So we are here at the mercy of 400 people. Sitting there, we're, we're hoping that there's going to be water in the tap if they decide. We are hoping, we sit there, we're hoping that lights will come on. We're all we're sitting, hoping, we're hoping, we're all sitting. Why don't you provide solutions yourself? Why don't you rise up and get involved? You're sitting there and hope that this is the Why don't you get involved in the solution? You complain, you complain, you complain. There's no water. Why don't you start addressing the issue yourself and discover creative ways of producing water? Instead of waiting for 400 people to decide one day to be nice to you and give you water. If they decide that they're going to be nice to you. If they decide, then if they decide you're not, you're not a priority because you're not a member, you're not a card carrying member. So it don't matter. So you are on the lowest level of the, of, the, of the ecosystem. You are like, you are there. 
And whereas you're a Christian, and you're busy speaking in tongues, you're not serious about politics. You are not a, you're not a real comrade. You are in that church that is charismatic. Those people who are deceived. It doesn't help us. God has called us. Unless we burn with a passion to solve the problems of this nation, we're going to be misgoverned. We're going to be misgoverned. Until we arise up and decide, ah, why should we send somebody else? I'm going myself to parliament. Keep wishing for a righteous government. What do you mean? What about you? Lord, there is a righteous leader. Ah, and you? Something wrong with you? Why don't you become the righteous leader yourself? Why don't you start in your local elections, in your municipality? Why is it done for? For some knight, knight in shining armor, for Prince Simon to come from somewhere. You go there. You can't understand this thing of just sitting and wait for some loud people, loud, uncouth, uncultured individuals who speak loud, who doesn't make sense. We listen to them. We shall die. They were saying now, just now, 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 just now. We shall die for Jacob Zuma. Now they're not telling us that now. They say, Zupta must fall. I mean, you were the one just now. We shall die for Jacob. Hey, hey. How can you trust people like that? Chameleons. Today they're going to die this guy. They want to kill this guy. They want to die for. That doesn't make sense to me. Until we rise up. Until we go. Until we say, send me. Until we lift up our hands and say, Lord, send me. You want to send somebody? Send me. I'm available. Until you do that, your children will inherit this mess. For the three people being killed every day, the highest middle rate in the world, the world's average is 7.6 people per 100,000. Our average is 35.6 people per 100,000. I don't want to talk about rape and the, and, and, and the rapes of children and, and orphans. We're in a mess. You see, because we live in a nice city, Eh? You live here in Rondebosch. You drive around Rondebosch and it's nice. Don't be, don't be ignorant. Our country is in a mess. Because you drive around Middleton and Newlands and you go to Century City, you know, you go around, you are, you're the PE, you are the middle class, you know, you're like, you've arrived, you're like, you're the new black, you're the new diamond. But, uh, don't be deceived, Doug. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? People are suffering there. Only a black diamond. What diamond? People are suffering. Get up there and solve the things. God wants you to be compassionate about people. Don't make it about you and your car and your nice suburb. And your high walls and your electrical fence. And your, your, your dog and your picket fence. Whatever you are carrying around. You know these days, I mean, we know that it's so sophisticated now. So we have puppies and you know what? You know what? <laughs> so also most not most we have arrived. Most next. So we are the new members. Most now we are arrived. So now that we have small puppies around. So we do stuff that the white is to do. Now it's our chance. We have arrived. So we also rear dogs and things. You know, sometimes we've got, you know, rabbits. Things we never did before. <laughs> we are the new members. We also have arrived. We go to Ocean Basket. You know, we order blood. <laughs> So no longer smiley, you know, we used to smiley and dumplings, you know, and, and uh, you know, the things. But now, not no longer smiley, we go to the ocean basket, we do a platter and, you know, some, some, you know, the things, you know, prawns and prawns and crabs. You know, we have arrived. It was, it's our chance now to eat. <laughs> so, Lord, help us. We're going to close... Um, I see, in, in, I go to Sentin and I see, I have no problem with material things, don't get me wrong. I go to Sentin, I, I see a black person drives a Rolls Royce, drop dead. It's a four million rands car, drives around Sentin. See, I'm driving in, I'm like, wow, wow, that's amazing. Amazing money. Amazing, successful, rich black people. Just wonder who are they giving back to? Do they remember the township or the high school they passed in? Why do they remember? Anything about Alexandria or Langa. Maybe their memory is short-sighted. They've got amnesia. 
I only know Constantia now. They only know the rose banks and nice places. They're forgotten where they come from. They're keeping up with the Jonases. I forgot forbid the church becomes that. God forbid we become that nonsensical life. That means that in heaven when eternity comes, when the judgment comes, that life will be like paper. The fire will burn it. It will mean nothing. That life is like the, there will be nothing left. There will not be crowned to reward you of that thing. Let's stand. I believe he wants to set apart some people that will be trailblazers around the nation that will announce and trumpet the sound of heaven that will come and release and show the glory of heaven into this earth. The, the African continent in particular needs us as Africans to rise up. We're tired of Western given solutions, we're tired of Western ideas and coming from IMF and World Bank and telling what to do. It's time for us to come up for the power of God and, and begin to come in there and, drill and dig the bowl water and begin to deal with malaria and deal with stuff that is an issue in this continent. For our children to inherit a place of peace, not a place of war. It's up to us. There must be, all of you must have a sense of divine calling. There must be a conviction in your heart. When you listen to the news, it's not something to just shake your head. You listen to the news, something must be, you must be convicted of that. When you hear the 3.5 million orphans in this country, ask yourself, what are you going to do about it? Don't just shake your head. Ask, what am I going to do about it? 30 children being abandoned every single month. What is my responsibility over that? You ask yourself that question. Because you are here for such a time as this. It's the reason why you are born. It's the reason why you exist. You don't exist just to, just to see things and read things and shake your head. You exist to provide solutions. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. Hallelujah. Father, we come to you this evening. We are a priesthood company. We are a priesthood of all believers. We come to you and we know that you are Father and we come to you because we know you are the one who can set us apart and anoint us for the tasks for which you have called us. I pray now, Father, that the people are gathered here carrying mantles. I know that I have people here. There are prophets. There are people here who are hidden. Hidden who have not bowed down to Baal, who are still hidden, whom you have kept for a time as this, who are in obscurity, whom you'll bring forth into the open. I now pray, Father God, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you would bear upon them by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you will bear them with a strong anointing and shake their comfort zone, shake where they are at and take them out into exposure with the fear of God, with the wisdom of God. We release, oh God, in this place the Nehemiahs of this world that you have called, the Deborahs that you have called, the Judges, that the Gideons that you have called, the Marys that you have called, the Pauls and the Peters and the Timothys and the Tituses that you have called in this, in this place. We know they exist here in this house today. The greatness is here. We know your spirit of greatness is here. We know that it's not few. It's not three. It's not four. It's not five people. It's not a few individuals. It's not a few chosen people. It's the whole company of believers who have been called by the almighty God. I release your calling, calling anointing. I release your calling anointing. This evening, let the calling anointing fall upon them now. Let the conviction of the Holy Spirit, let the burden of the Lord be our burden. Let the things that break your heart break our hearts also. Let us be concerned with the things you're concerned about. For you, O oh God, are speaking from the heavens. Let the sons and the daughters of God hear the voice of the Father. It is time for us to be in attention when the Father is speaking, when the Tzivoth, when the, when the Lord, the Elohei Tzivoth, the Lord of hosts, the captain of the armies of heaven, when he speaks, it's time for us to pay attention for in the days in which we live the voice of the Lord shall sound strongly in this nation like a trumpet shall sound and you shall hear my voice declares the Lord hear my voice in this season open your ears you my children for my voice is uttering upon this nation my voice is uttering upon the land attend to my voice incline your ear unto my saying for I shall speak into the earth declares the Lord I shall speak in the season to come I shall speak words I shall speak mysteries 
I shall speak patterns, plans, schemes, strategies to be released to those who are ready to implement them for my glory declares God, for my spirit will not be restrained and restricted in the days to come. You shall walk in my glory declares God. You shall see my anointing declares God. You shall not walk empty handed. You shall re- receive and carry mantles of old. God declares God. There's restoration of mantles of old. Mantles of glory. Mantles of the prophetic are being released in this season. For the Lord declares apostolic grace and prophetic mantles are being brought back to the church. You shall look at the river and release the mantle and the river shall part. For the spirit of the Lord shall say there shall not be any obstacle in the days to come that shall stand before you. No more wars. No more obstacles. No more doors. Close. Doors are being opened. There's a heaven that is open over you. Declare the spirit of God. Attend to my saying declares God. Kali Kolosuda Abesia Beluta Sia Toma Kasia Makuba Disia Meluta Le How Mokusha on the horizon declares God and the horizon a company is rising up a company is rising up a company is rising up a people completely absorbed a people completely absorbed by my presence is being raised in this season and it's being raised in this hour right now in this church right now in this meeting I am raised raising you up declares God I am raising you up I am lifting you up you shall come up and see things that no man has seen you shall come up and see things that no man has seen you shall come up and hear things that no man has seen it's your season declares God Nondre o moa la zao magatea siao bale apozoa bare apozoa revia la ozona batia olifa hatu se lete la kuma sia ole ba disea otila o palicia lo licea leo la hebe sia la o ride ha o ali kasia oli kasuka ma sia ah suka thank you Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. The rod of justice, the rod of righteousness is in your hands. The rod of justice. You shall go forth and bring justice. You shall go forth and bring righteousness. There's enough injustice in this world, but the rod of justice is in your hands. Take the rod and bring my justice, declares God. Sibra carabos, siara, rababos, siara, garada, raga, 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 rubasia gatolobos, maguruzo caraca, asiki. Zia ra kudu ma zia guta ma zuga gadikia, zuna gadu gasikia, gadu gasike. Sia gato short. Le ma son. Hila hasiki. Don asia. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the reformation that is coming. Thank you for the reformation that is coming. Thank you for the reformation that is coming. Thank you, O oh God, for that we 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 see coming. We make it ours. We accept it. We say yes to it. We say yes to your will, God. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Jesus.